I've been sharing Mac productivity tips for years now, but I'm still surprised by how often I come across features that most Mac users have never heard of. So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 Mac tips that every Mac owner should know, but probably doesn't. Okay, let's get into it. So here I've got two Finder windows open and there's a file in one location that I want to move to another. Now Finder can be a little unintuitive here because the default keyboard shortcut is Command and C to copy and then Command and V to paste. But that just creates a copy. If you actually want to move the file instead of copying it, you'd still use Command and C to copy the file, but then press Command, Option and V to move it to the new location, removing it from the original spot. When it comes to drag and drop though, it's the opposite. If you drag a file from one location to another, it moves the file by default. But if you'd prefer to copy the file, so you keep the original in its place, hold down the Option key while dragging it. You'll see a little green plus icon to show you that it's going to be copied. You can use this exact same method to duplicate a file within the same folder. Just press and hold Option and drag the file slightly within the same window and it will create a duplicate. And if you'd rather use a keyboard shortcut to duplicate a file, that one's easy. Just press Command and D. Maybe you've got a video file on your Mac and you need to convert it into a different format, shrink the file size, or even extract just the audio. You can do all of this directly in Finder without using any third-party apps. Just right-click on the video file and scroll to the bottom of the menu where you'll see an option called Encode Selected Video Files. A window will pop up, though you might need to resize it to see everything clearly. From here, click into the setting drop-down and you'll get a few options like H.264 or HEVC with different resolution choices. So if you've got a 4K video, but you want to convert it to 1080p, you can do that here. There's also the option to convert into Apple ProRes or select audio only if you just want to extract the sound from the file. Under destination, you can choose a specific folder or leave it set to same as source file so the converted version appears right next to the original. You can even tick a box to delete the original file after conversion. Once you're happy with your settings, just press continue and your Mac will take care of the rest. On newer Apple Silicon machines, this should all happen very quickly. I'm sure you already know that pressing Command, Shift and 4 brings up a little crosshair that you can use to select a portion of your screen and take a screenshot. But the problem with this method is that once the screenshot is captured, you get a little preview in the corner of your screen and you have to act pretty quickly if you want to drag that into something like an email or a note. If you'd prefer to have more time, here's what you would do. Press and hold Command, Shift and 4 as usual. Then select the area that you'd like to capture. But before you let go of your cursor, press and hold the control key. This tells your Mac to copy the screenshot directly to your clipboard instead of saving it as a file. You can now take your time, go and draft your email or open your document, and when you're ready, press Command and V to paste the screenshot straight from your clipboard. If you're into productivity tips for your Mac, you'll know that sometimes the biggest gains come from tools that help you get ideas out of your head and into something usable fast. And that's exactly what today's sponsor, Gamma, is all about. Gamma is like PowerPoint, Notion, and Canva rolled into one, but with AI built in. You just type a prompt and Gamma builds a full presentation, documents, or web page for you in seconds. It's structured, styled, and ready to go. But what's great is how flexible it is. You can paste in some notes, import a file, or just start from scratch with a one-line idea. Everything is built in cards, kind of like slides, and you can move things around, rewrite sections, change the tone, or even ask the AI to expand a point with a single click. Same goes for images. Here, for example, I've got an image and I want to remove the background, one click. Or maybe I want to change the subject entirely, swap the style, or drop in a different color palette. Gamma's AI tools handle all of that. You can even describe the vibe you're after and it will generate brand new visuals that match. I've been using it to help me with some of my training content and social posts, and honestly, it's so much faster than starting from scratch. What's clever is that you can start with a single source, like some notes or a rough outline, and Gamma will generate multiple assets from it, a deck, a document, a web page, even a social carousel, and everything stays on brand and beautifully designed straight away. It's all online, no software to install, and you can share your final version as a link, export it as a PowerPoint or PDF, or even embed it on your website. If you'd like to check it out for yourself, just click the link in the description of this video. Let's say you're sending a link to someone in an email. Most people would type out their message, leave a space, and then just paste the full link in using Command and V. The problem is that doesn't look especially tidy. There is a much better way to do it, 
that takes the same amount of time but looks way more professional. Just type out your message as usual, then highlight the portion of text that you want to turn into a link. Press Command and K on your keyboard and a text box will appear. You can then paste your link into that box using Command and V. Hit OK and your hyperlink will be inserted neatly into the text instead of showing up as a separate messy URL. Chances are you've got at least one or two apps that you always want to have open every time that you restart your Mac. For me, it's apps like Moom, which is a great window manager, and Moz, a free tool that improves how third-party mice, like Logitech ones, work with the Mac. There's never really a time when I wouldn't want those apps running straight away, so I've set them to automatically launch whenever my Mac starts up. To do this, just open system settings, choose general from the sidebar, then go into login items and extensions. Right at the top of that page, you'll see open at login. Tap the plus button here, select applications from the sidebar in the finder window that appears, then scroll through the list and choose the app that you want. Tap open and that app will now launch automatically every time that your Mac starts up. If you see anything in this list that you don't want opening by itself, just highlight it and press the minus button. That won't uninstall or quit the app, it just means that you'll have to open it manually next time that you restart your Mac. If you own AirPods, whether that's AirPods Max, Pro or regular AirPods, you might occasionally want to check what firmware they're running. And your Mac makes it really easy to find this information. As long as the AirPods have connected to your Mac recently, you'll see them listed in the Bluetooth section of Control Center, even if they're not currently connected. To check the firmware version, click into Control Center in the top right hand corner of your screen. Then instead of just clicking the arrow next to Bluetooth, Hold down the option key on your keyboard and then click the arrow. This brings up a way more detailed list of information about all the Bluetooth devices that have connected to your Mac, including their current firmware version. This can be really useful if you're troubleshooting or trying to work out whether one of your devices is due a firmware update. And while I've used AirPods as the example here, this trick works with any Bluetooth device that connects to your Mac. Unfortunately, Mac apps freezing up is still a pretty common occurrence. So the next time you get the little spinning beach ball of death and you're not sure what to do, try to remember this particular keyboard shortcut. Press Command, Option and Escape all at the same time and a Force Quit Applications box will appear on your screen. Then just use your arrow keys or your mouse to select the app that isn't responding and press the Force Quit button. In most cases, this will shut the app down completely and you can usually reopen it straight away to get back to what you were doing. Just keep in mind, this is only something that you would use when the app won't close on its own. The normal keyboard shortcut for quitting an app, by the way, is Command and Q. The dock on your Mac is useful, but it can be a bit limiting when it comes to organization. You can rearrange the apps from left to right, but that's about it. However, if you use a specific terminal command, you can actually insert blank app tiles into the dock, and these act as spacer tiles, letting you break your dock into sections and organize your apps into categories. To do this, first copy the terminal command that I've included in the description of this video. It's too long and complicated to display on screen. Then press command and the space bar to open Spotlight Search. Type in terminal and press return to open it. Now press command and V to paste the command into terminal and hit return. You'll see a blank space has been added to the right hand side of your dock. You can just click and drag it wherever you want it to go. And if you want to add more separators, just repeat the process as many times as you like. And if you ever change your mind, just right click on any of the separator tiles and choose remove from dock. Simple. Spotlight search is probably the best way to find anything on your Mac, but I think a lot of people avoid using it because the results can feel a bit overwhelming. If you search for something like invoice, for example, your Mac is gonna return results from all over the place emails, reminders, documents, web results, even dictionary definitions. That isn't much help if you're looking for something specific. The best way to tidy this up is to use a search filter. And the one that I think every Mac owner should remember is the phrase kind colon. So if you press command and space to open spotlight and you type kind colon mail, followed by a space, then a search term like invoice, spotlight will only return results from your mail app. If you know that you're looking for a PDF, you can type kind colon PDF and then your keyword and you'll only see PDF documents. Or if you think that the item that you're looking for is in a specific folder, you can search kind colon folder and then your keyword to see all of the folders that match. It's a simple trick 
that lets you take control of Spotlight Search and make it work the way that you want. If you use your phone to take photos of receipts and store them in the Photos app, your Mac will automatically sort those into their own folder. To find it, open the Photos app and look in the sidebar on the left. Expand the Utilities section and you'll see an option called Receipts. Click into this and any receipts that your Mac has identified will appear here for quick access. Now, if you want to send one of those receipts to someone, you don't need to send the full image complete with background. Just double click to open the photo, then right click directly on the receipt. Your Mac will isolate the subject of the photo, which in this case is the receipt, and give you two options, copy subject or share subject. If you copy it, the receipt will go to your clipboard so you can paste it wherever you like. If you choose share subject, you'll get a share sheet straight away with all of your usual options and the background will be automatically removed from the image. And this even works in Safari too. So if you find an image on a web page and right click on it, you won't see the share subject option, but you will see copy subject. Once copied, it works in exactly the same way. Background removed, ready to be pasted wherever you need it. So there you go, 10 tips for the Mac that I reckon most owners have no clue about. What about you? Anything in here that caught you by surprise? Or anything that you think I should have included? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.